You're listening to the Understand Me Podcast, where we listen to learn and talk to teach. Life is complex. Let's understand one another. Here we go. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerson Hernandez, and I'll be the host of the You, Me, Understand Me podcast, a podcast designated to give our everyday people like you and me a voice in the mainstream media. If you haven't had a chance yet, head over to our website and read the topic of today's podcast, understandme.blog. That's U-N-D-E-R-S-T-A-N-D, me, dot blog. Today's podcast, episode number one, revolves around my first blog post titled, Why Your High School Friends Suck. Now, what better guest to have for our first ever podcast than one of the most influential people I have met in my life? The first guest is Mr. Jason Taylor, a seasoned director with his latest film, Fight the Force, detailing the perception of women society as a whole and the abilities we have as a community to fight many of these sexist perceptions. Today, we will discuss the following topics, our social circle, mentorship, the biggest failures, tips on auditing our social circles, finding success, and much more. So, gentlemen, without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce Jason Taylor. What's going on? What's going on? All right, Jason, first thing first, go ahead, tell me a little bit about yourself, tell the audience about yourself. Okay. My name is Jason Taylor. I uh, grew up in Koreatown, California. Seasoned filmmakers, like you said, I've been doing this for, what, nine years? You know, started off as an intern at BET, and then, you know, it's kind of turned into my own thing. Now, I got a movie out, working on two television shows. You know, yep. I got some more projects coming out. So, yeah, pretty much the gist of it, you know, doing my thing. All right. So, you're just everywhere. Just a ball <laughs> of mystery over here. Got one foot in one pond, and then another one in the lake. And I got a hand in another one, and, and then my fingers in another one. You need to get more organs inside you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, first thing first, so pretty much the whole idea as to why I chose you specifically for my first blog podcast, Mm -hmm. it's the idea of who influenced you as you were growing up. Now, in terms of I've known you since I was in my teens, pretty much once I was 12 and I'm 13, I was like, all right, let's get better at basketball. And then here you come into my life. And Jason, he's been training me for basketball when I was young, helped me mentor me as a coach. And now we're giving back to our communities in the best way we know how to. By building partnerships, relationships through sports and through networking. So that's important. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, like I mentioned, you helped me in that term. So I felt, all right, who's a great guest to have? Mentorship. First person I thought of. All right, Jason. I appreciate that. So now it's like, all right, let's start digging in. Let's start finding out what exactly <laughs> led you to be who you are and what journey along the way you had to overcome. First thing first, social circle. Who makes it up? What do you think is important in it? And what's the key points that you make when you find who you want in your social circle? Because that isn't a commodity everyone can have. No, it's not. Sometimes people have toxic vibes. We yes. want positive vibes, people that influence you, people that motivate you every single day. Mm-hmm. In terms of you, how do you decide who you want in that social circle? How do you want them to be in that atmosphere? For me, it's fairly simple. I meet tons of people every single day just with work. You know, if I'm doing a film, people is like, oh, I know this person. You should meet them. You know, I've met tons of people, but I think the one defining factor is how can we benefit each other? And are you going to take advantage of what I can give you? And I think at that point, the ambition starts to come in. Like if I'm working on something and you are equally as ambitious as I am, or you even more ambitious than I am, then I'm willing to see what can happen. You know, a lot of people these days, they have a lot of people in a circle that say, I would definitely help you. I can do this. I can do that yeah, for you. I can man. do all that stuff. And then when it comes down to it, it's like, like wait, else do you? exactly. Like, wait, where are you at? You were supposed to help me. And right now, you know, fortunately, I have a very, very strong team. I got a lot of people helping me with, you know, my latest projects, actually. And the one thing I can tell you is that I'm grateful for that because it took me a very, very long time to even consider this a circle. You know, and I think that's the key for it is like you don't want to rush into just adding people into your circle. Exactly. I think that's a key point. You don't want to rush. You want to be patient just because we want it that bad. Mm -hmm. We're willing to speed the process up. But I think it's a very important thing that you brought up. Patience. Mm -hmm. Every time you meet somebody, 
You can't just bring them in your circle, bring them in that comfort zone. You have to give them time to see how they really are in your darkest moments, your lowest moments. Yes. I think that's a big thing. I think everybody could be your friend when you're up there in the of hell. Of course. It's everybody, easy. Yeah, man. Everybody, it's very easy. Everybody's just like, hey, Jason. Yeah, we did this. When you're at your lowest, man, the ones that come and pick you up, hold your hand until you're back in place. Those are the ones that I think really make the deal breaker to kind of set your foundation for success. Without it, it's like you have a shaky foundation. People are just like you when you're successful, but when you're in the works to get there, mm -hmm. it takes a while. You got to find people that are kind of committed to your growth, and that's the hard part. We're in Hollywood, man. You know, a lot of people are actors <laughs> and actresses. You know, like, we have it to the point where people are looking at it like, all right, so what can I get out of this person? And what do I got to tell this person so I can get whatever I can out of them without them realizing that I'm taking advantage of them? Man, that's true. I agree. That is a low point. Yeah. Like, definitely, definitely. I mean, ideally for you, like, How do you think it affects you having your social circle? How does it affect you mentally and physically? Like on my end, I think back then when I had my social circle, I wasn't very entrepreneurship focused. So I was more about, all right, let's have fun. Let's not think about the future. Mm -hmm. Let's just focus on now. That type of like you only live once mentality. Yeah. As soon as I started growing up and distancing myself from certain individuals, eventually I met new people and then my circle became a bit more centered to, all right, I want to be successful. I want to reach these goals. What do I have to do? What can we do as a team to get me there? And so I think for me on my end, my whole mental aspect changed from thinking one way about short term, thinking long term, what I want to do in this world when I leave. Mm -hmm. And then physically, you just feel more alive. And it's a weird thing. I think when yeah. I first had like a social circle that wasn't as positive as I had, I would be like, man, like, why am I sad? It doesn't <laughs> even make sense. And then when I got my new social circle, I'm like, Jesus, like, yeah. I'm too happy today. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is realistically knowing who you have. And then the mental part of it is you start to realize that I becomes we, you know, and I think True. that's the biggest thing too. like decisions that you usually make for yourself by yourself because you are by yourself. A lot of those decisions now become affected by whoever you have in your circle. So, you know, you have people that you can consider like friends, the ones you consider like those are the people that are in my circle. You have to now make decisions not just for you, but for everybody involved, you know, because whatever decision you choose affects everybody that you have involved. That's just the way it goes. If you didn't want to have that responsibility, then don't have anybody in your circle. That's true. I agree. It's very weird because like on mine, I feel like when you're young, you don't really think about those things. You're kind you of, you're more like with the flow. But look what that. we're taught in school, you know? It's, oh, look man. Look what we're taught in school. Look what we're taught at home. You're like whenever something bad happens, you're separated from everybody. Whenever you're at school and something bad happens, you're taken out of an environment where you have a bunch of people. And then you're forced to go and be by yourself. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think it, now that you mention it, it does come a lot from that educational system that we're placed in because we're taught as individuals to own up to our responsibilities, but we're not taught how to use a team to handle the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think in one sense, we do have an individual responsibility to our actions. But on another sense, we don't have to do everything on our own. Exactly. We need a team. We can't. Everything that strives to be successful always needs a team around it. Yes. And I think that's a very good point that we're not really focused enough or we're not really taught that not everything has to be on our own sometimes the team and oriented environment could be more beneficial than a single person environment of course. like a whole i think especially within your field of work i think you just need a perfect team around you every project you're doing it's like all right i need somebody to videotape this help me do this script help me create like for your end i think it's very important that you have a team that's very goal oriented and is aware that jason needs us let's provide yes. support And I think for me, I'm grateful for the team that I have because it's one of those situations where you're not able to provide everything. And people that you have in your circle may be able to provide that missing piece that you've been trying to look for forever in a day. You know, sometimes you'd be like, dang, I wish I could have this one thing. <laughs> and then somebody comes into your circle and is like, I can provide that one thing. Exactly, exactly. And then you're like, dang, all this time I've been looking for something and now I have it. Like, damn, okay, now I see it, you know. But it's one of those situations where you have to look at it from a perspective of like, I trust this person coming in to give me that missing mm -hmm. piece. I trust myself to open up to even look for that missing piece. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, and, and now that you mentioned it, I think that's a very good point. I think as humans, we want to be perfect. Every little thing we do, we want to reach mm -hmm. the epitome of perfection in yes. terms of every single skill set. Yes. The hard part is identifying what you're not good at and finding somebody that can fill in that missing piece to the puzzle. Yes, which is the reason why I'm grateful for my team because 
we have our ups and downs, you know, just like any friendship, just like exactly. any group that mm -hmm. you have in like any relationship, you're going to have ups and downs. It's not always going to be perfect. You know, everybody talks about the three month like probation period whenever you meet somebody. <laughs> and like oh, in those yeah, three yeah. months, you really don't get to know it like them until after three months and then mm -hmm. they show you who they really are. I truly believe it's one of those situations where you look at it and say, I know my team. You know, I have my team. And yes, we may go through well, ups and downs, but at the end of the day, I know what we're trying to strive for. So if I'm willing to fight for that, I'll fight for that, you know, and I'll keep my team together. So, okay. you know, that's what I'm looking at now. Like, I'm literally going through that situation now, just trying to make sure my team is intact just so we can continue further on this goal. Yeah. And the very important thing, I think it's to do everything as a team, that everything that when you guys aim for goals, it's team goals. And mm -hmm. as much as we all have individual goals, the team goals are come first. Yes. The team goals are what establish the foundation toward what actions you take, what plans you do. Mm -hmm. So that being said, as an individual, what do you do as a person when you see that somebody in that circle is too focused on themselves? They disregard the team goals and they're very oriented into, no, I'm in this team, but I want to do my stuff. I want to focus on me before I focus on them. Where they pretty much become selfish at that. And how do you identify that? And more importantly, how do you actually remove that type of environment or a type of vibe from the team? You know, it's funny. You have to look at the pros and the cons of that situation. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is you should be able to know from the beginning. If that person is that way, you should also know if during the process of your journey, if that person may flip a switch one day and it's all team and then at some point they switch in there all themselves. You know, I just really think it's a matter of knowing who you have around, trusting your instincts. And I think I could say the way to remove them, I would say the way to move on from that person mm. is more of like just letting them know, like, look, I wanted this to work, but unfortunately it's not going to work. In the event that you get your own situation done and handled and taken care of and you want to come back to the group and work on this with us, yeah, you're more than likely to do it. Definitely. But it's a matter of like, honestly, it goes back to whoever's in charge. If you have that one person that's in charge over everybody yeah, and that person makes a decision and says, you know what? Speaking from my perspective, mm -hmm. it just doesn't look like you're the right fit for this team, mm -hmm. either right now or at this moment in time or ever. But if you have a team environment, other people are making situations. Yeah. I think it's a matter of just telling yourself, like, look, I have to look out for the betterment of what we're all trying to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And if you can provide that opportunity for somebody else who's willing to be a part of the team, then, you know, by all means, do it. Then it falls back into the beginning. Like, you got to know who it is that you're trying to bring into your circle. Mm. So, you know, realistically, it's just a matter of making a decision. And not feeling bad about it, but also looking at it from a point of view of saying, look, I know what we want. I know what I want and I know what I'm trying to accomplish with the people that I have around me. And if you're not able to help me with that, then there's really nothing else that we can do. It's more of just like, look, this is what we're going to have and how are we going to make it work? Of course. And if you're not able to do that, then we got to go find somebody else. Yeah. And very important that you mention that because at the end of the day, to distinguish moving on from removing, I think moving on in that aspect, I think that's the most hardest thing to do in terms of when you're in your circle. So for example, on my end, in my blog post, I talk about how I had a friend that his name was Connor, X, Y, and Z, Connor. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea behind me giving this person a story is that in the journey of entrepreneurship, when you first start, you have zero supporters at the end of the day. The supporters mm -hmm. that you do have, it could be your family, friends. And it's very difficult to actually have that relationship with them where you can tell them, hey, you know what? I'm thinking of taking this risk. Yeah. Can you support me? Because sometimes people don't support you 100%, not because they don't like you, but because logically it doesn't make sense at the time. Yeah. So yeah. On mine, for example, I had with the Connor-like relationship, I had these aspirations for entrepreneurship. When I would mention these topics of entrepreneurship to Connor, Connor would be very negative about him. He would be like, oh, well, you can't do that because X, yeah. Y, and Z, or yeah. you're really willing to do this. Or he would give me a whole list of cons with only one pro. Yeah. And so eventually I notice it starts feeding into your brain. And it subconsciously it's yeah, like, it all right, like, hey, he might be right. Or, hey, you know what? Maybe you're not onto something. And so the more I let that conversation steer in my head, the more I was pretty much fighting against myself. Mm -hmm. And so eventually once I finally identified, like, maybe this isn't the right fit for my social circle. It could yeah. be potentially for another social circle he might be the best fit but for me at this moment i don't think i need this type of friend or acquaintance and so moving on to actually tell myself that 
took a long time because I mean I've known this person for a long time and for me to be yeah. like man I think we just grew apart or I think we're just both in different places right now I think I need to kind of find a way to get newer people in my circle they can yeah. uplift me and next thing you know I find new groups of people and when I mention these things to them instead of the Connor like response which is negative these guys would be positive like okay yeah. well hey like great for you this is what we can do let's we'll start getting you involved in x y and z or mm -hmm. I have a person you can meet he can definitely help you out with that yeah that is like a, such a game changer especially for young people I think we don't realize that now that like, especially now I think like you and me work with a lot of teens they're yes. always very like oh I've known this guy since like for four years it's amazing yeah, yeah. I mean look when it comes to the kids they haven't been around 15, 16 years yet, you know? <laughs> well, like, me and you probably had, like, 15, 16 years of experience. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I think the biggest thing I can tell you is the one thing I always tell myself. You know you're confident in who you are if you're able to be that same person, regardless of whoever's around. Definitely. Only because there are some people who are one way around their friends. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are one way around their family. There are some people who are another way around their job. Yep. Some people who are another way when they're in public. There's mm -hmm. somebody who's another way when they're by themselves. Yeah, definitely. I truly believe if you're able to be the same exact person, regardless of whoever's around, regardless of whatever's happening, I think you are secure enough to be able to know if somebody like a Connor yeah. is around and is not even supposed to be in your circle. Only because you're securing yourself. you know. And I think at that point, if you have somebody that's willing to be positive and optimistic, great. But some people don't have that opportunity. Exactly. They don't have those friends. And for those that don't have those friends, what do you want from that friend? Mm -hmm. Is it eating you alive that you're not even securing yourself to make your own decisions? Mm -hmm. How you're influenced by other people? Yeah. You need to be able to influence others to think optimistically, to think positively, to think from a standpoint of, I know I can do whatever I want to do if I have the right people around. Oh, yeah, of course. Definitely. I think that motivation to tell yourself, I can do this, I think is very much influenced by the people you surround yourself with. I think one of the big things for our young viewers, for the young kids that are just transitioning from middle school to high school or high school to college, is to be able to be honest with yourself. If you don't feel comfortable with a certain friend or you don't think that your circle is being too optimistic about your goals or they're not pushing you to be better, mm -hmm. I think it's important for them to identify that and be honest with themselves and say, this guy or this group isn't helping me be who I want to really be. Yeah. I need to start thinking, who can I hang out with or who can I find that can help me get to the goal that I want? For example, like I think one of the common trends now is social media. Yeah. People just want followers, likes. People just want to be recognized. Yeah. And I think when you surround yourself by people that are too materialistic or too self-centered, that you're not really going to get any great experience from that type of atmosphere. That being said, if the moment an individual or a kid or a teen can say, you know what? I don't think this is important to me, but mm -hmm. I think helping others is important to me. And yeah. once they make that distinguished, different perspective and they find somebody else, that changes the whole game completely. So, and if you can't find anybody else, I think just surrounding yourself with positive thoughts, podcasts, videos, mm -hmm. things of motivation that you're not alone when these things happen. Everybody has gone through it. Everybody of has course. had to drop somebody. Of everybody course. has had to remove themselves from a certain atmosphere, environment. But it's the way that you approach it. I think that's the most important thing because if you're just okay with being treated a certain way, then you're not really doing yourself any favor. But no. if you take yeah. a stand and say, you know what, I'm confident about who I am, what my goals are, this group isn't it. Mm -hmm. The whole game changes immediately, especially if you're young. My God. It does. I'll tell you like this. Social media really shines a light on who you really mm -hmm. are. I think yep. people don't realize that. Like the people who are starving for followers Man. don't really have any friends. Yeah. Or the ones that are looking for all the attention don't get enough attention at home. Yep. Social media has a way of bringing out people's inner demons. Definitely. But I will say that social media is also a way for some people to really connect with others. And I think the idea that people no longer remember phone numbers, <laughs> they ever remember Instagram handles. That's uh, true. Honestly, I think people yep, would, that, that definitely is helpful. Like, oh, can you call this person? Oh, damn, I don't know the number. Let, let me just go on Instagram and DM real quick. I know exactly who they are. Uh, I think that factor is a big deal. And yeah, I think yeah, for sure. the kids, it can make or break them before they even realize that they're made or broken. Because, I mean, just the group of kids that we've dealt with, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. We, me and you both coach girls. And girls nowadays between ages of 13 and 18, 
I think that time frame is really important for all of those girls because it teaches them who they are. Yep. It gives them the motivation to learn who they can be as an adult. Yeah, definitely. Um, but a lot of the girls, they feed into the drama yeah, exactly. and an unnecessary like back and forth with people over the most tiniest <laughs> thing. Oh, you didn't help me like this guy. Yeah. Or, yeah. oh, no, you didn't come to my house one day. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or, oh, you bought the same shoes I did. Like, yeah. who cares? But these kids, these girls, they care about those things, you know, and then think about it like, why should any of that stuff matter? Exactly. Why should any of that stuff matter? And at the end of it is like, if it does matter, why should it affect you so much? <laughs> like, if yeah, this person no, isn't sure. making the decision. So, yeah, I think that's a big deal. And you know what? I think now that you bring that up, I think at the end of the day, it's just it just ties down your social circle. Who do you have in there? Mm -hmm. What are they telling you? What are they whispering in your ear? Yeah. That's going to travel to your subconscious and then eventually you'll take action in that way. But bringing it back to the topic now, I think your upbringing, ideally, how were you raised? Who were your mentors in that time? Now you're in a position where you're being the mentor, but when little Jason was born, when he was four years old, who was providing mentorship to you? What's your background in terms of that? You know, with me growing up in Koreatown, mm -hmm. there was a lot of disadvantages. The only reason why, because I was always looked at as an outsider. You know, I wasn't looked at as a part of the community because the majority of the community was Asian. Yeah, hey, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I would literally come home one day or some days and I'll be trying to get into like my building. Yeah. And my neighbors who see oh, me all the man. time don't even open the Jesus. door because they feel like uh, I, I don't trust this guy out there. Yeah. Even yeah. though they just saw me walk into my apartment 50,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> but they're on the other side of the glass. Let's say I forgot my keys one day or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just won't open it. Man, that's I think a cold. lot of that had to do with the fact that a lot of it for me was my mom worked in the school right down the street. My grandmother worked at the school right down the street. My cousins went to the school right down the street. Yeah. You know, and because of how important my mom was and my grandmother was at that school. Yeah. So many other people got to know me. Uh, only because I, I was their son or their grandson. Yeah, yeah, of course. And through that, a lot of people would give me advice because of who my mother and my grandmother was. Oh, and that's I how see. that's how I went in my area. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would gain a lot of knowledge from there. People was like, Oh yeah, I heard you're doing this, I heard you're doing that. Um, and granted I wasn't doing a lot when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't dawn on me until like I was like twenty twenty one. What I really wanted yeah, to do, yeah. but realistically, like as I was younger, I think the the thing I can always count on was my motivation came from a lot of the people that my mother knew or yeah, my yeah, grandmother knew. Even with my family, like my grandfather was like one of the biggest influences in my life because he would always tell me the biggest advice. Like I remember telling him one day, I'm like, Grandpa, something's hard. I was like, I can't do this. It's hard. Yeah. He was like, Has it been done before? I was like, well, yeah. He said, then it's not that hard. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you know, man. it's not that hard. On the you know? nail. And, you know, that's always resonated with me ever since because he would be that one person, that driving force for me. And then a lot of other people would be that driving force for me. Yeah. And then as soon as I got to BET, like all those people became driving forces for me as well. Ah, I you see. You know, so I think the key for me was I was open minded. Yeah. Oh, man. Definitely. That's the key for me. Like, exactly. I think regardless of whoever I got influence from, yep. I was able to get that influence because I was open minded. A lot of people are not open minded where they feel like the advice would be criticism. Oh, or yeah. Or they yeah. would feel like the advice is in a form of, oh, why are you telling me what to do? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, definitely. No, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you a suggestion. Yeah, of course. But of you're course. taking it. So it's always the perception of what people are telling you. But if you're open minded, the perception is always open. Like you're I, fine with that. Yeah. And you know what? I think. That's a big thing that we as mentors need to really start. And for anybody listening that we need to start imposing on others, yes. I think making them open minded mm -hmm. and a hundred percent, because I think as you grow up, once we reach a certain age, we're like, okay, I know everything. Exactly. And it's like, <laughs> all right, I don't need to know anything else. I know everything this way. I think yeah. whatever you tell me, it's nonsense. Once you're more open minded, I think you, the whole world opens up. You're like, oh, I never yes, thought about that this way. Exactly. That's exactly what the case is. I think we close ourselves from the beginning and it's very hard for us to open ourselves up. And you can always tell who those people are who are open minded, who are closed minded, because it's just the perception of how they perceive things. You know, you can go to somebody and tell them, yo, I got this new idea. You know, you should jump on it with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they're like, Okay, I ha yeah, let's do it. You know, those are the open minded people because they're doing it. But yeah, for sure. But you get those closed minded people like your friend Connor, who are, you know, people are like, man, look, I don't know what you're going to do with that. I don't see that going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you can go ahead and try it, but I don't see it going <laughs> anywhere. I think those types of people you really have to be careful for. But, you know, us as mentors definitely have to impose the open mindedness a whole lot more. I think yep. it's a matter of just letting them know, like, look, you don't have to be closed to this idea. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's almost one of those like if you're being told 10 minutes of information, 
don't close your mind to nine minutes of it. Yeah, yeah. Listen to all 10 minutes of it and pick out whatever you want out of mm. those 10 minutes. It's literally like what I do with movies. You know, yeah. I can film a whole basketball game. I can film a whole movie. That doesn't mean I'm going to use every single part of it. Exactly. I'm going to use bits and pieces of it that I need that mm-hmm. are necessary for what it is that I'm trying to do. Exactly. And I think that's the approach that everybody needs to have when it comes to listening to people, when it comes to having a mentor, when it comes to being a mentor themselves, they have to understand it's a process. You know, you can go to that point where you can learn and get all this information mm-hmm. and then start to pick out what it is that you need from all the information you were given. Exactly. Not close your mind to the majority of that conversation (laughs) because you felt like it wasn't necessary. Definitely. Like, you don't know what's necessary for you at one point in time. Sometimes it might not be necessary for you at that moment in time. Of course. But the idea is you still have that information to still go back and look at or remember. And you may go something down line, like two years later, and be like, dang, I remember that conversation that I was told or I had. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that one part that I didn't want to pay attention to at that point. But now I can go pick that part mm-hmm. of that conversation and bring it out. Like literally when you do a movie, like when I did my movie, I had plenty of stuff that I could put into it. Yeah. But I had to give myself a certain time frame. That does not mean that I can't go back after and use the footage that I never used. Definitely. And go put something else out. You I know? agree. I agree. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back right in a few seconds. Guys. Yes, sir. All right, and we're back. Now, first thing we talked about, social circle. Second thing, mentorship. Now, let's get to the dirty deeds of uh-huh. failures. Yeah. We are not perfect. All of us have failed at something. Yeah. Now, on my journey to entrepreneurship, toward establishing myself as someone in this entrepreneurship world, first thing I ever did involving entrepreneurship, I think, was the worst thing I ever did. <laughs> I think uh, in college, I was abroad. One of my old friends in high school, he was like, hey, I'm doing like art. Right, let's We should do some clothing business. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's do a clothing business. Mm-hmm. And man, and I'm here thinking I'm Bill Gates. I'm like, yeah, man, I got you. Like, you tell me what you need, how much money we need. Boom, boom, boom. And it lasts a month. It literally like, yeah. man, I was like, damn, like this thing is not easy. I'm, no. In my mind, it was just, all right, let's get this money in. Let's buy this equipment buy this inventory and we're set after that we'll sell it everyone's gonna want to buy it we'll be rich yeah, hell yeah. no nah. it was the complete opposite it was literally like i'm like looking at my bank account i'm like damn everything's coming up I ain't nothing coming in it's yeah. like sheesh and so then that to me was the biggest failure because it brought a lot of awareness to all right i can't be naive with money especially in the business world i can't think that i know everything and i have to be more mindful of who i choose to work with who i choose to devote and invest my time with once I identified that, I was like, all right, this wasn't really too much of a failure. It was a failed life journey, but I think it's part of what makes you, you. I yeah. think that every failure comes with a stepping stone. Every time you fail at something, you're one step closer to reaching your end goal. Without failure, there's no progression. And without progression, there isn't success. So yeah. I look at it now and I'm like, all right, it was a failure, but it wasn't bad. I learned a lot from it that I can use now that is taking me to a new level because of that experience. So you don't fail at something, you're not trying hard enough. You're not trying hard enough, you don't have passion yet. Yeah. On your end, what's your biggest failure? Um, I don't know if I have a biggest failure. Honestly, I think people have this negative connotation of what failure is. Okay. I truly believe failure is necessary. Definitely. I also believe the bad times are necessary. Sadly. I think all the heartache is necessary. Yep. Um, only because it gives you a better understanding of how to conduct yourselves. Yep. I don't need things to go right all the time, you know? But at the same time, if I can help myself, I will learn from those mistakes so that I don't see that failure again. Of course, of course. But I would say if I had to mention my biggest failure, I would probably say I didn't get started early. Mm. I didn't start early enough as much as I should have. Yeah. You know, like I interned at BET in 2010. Yeah. I didn't really start anything until about 2016, you know, 2015. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... I think the only failure that I can ever tell myself that yeah, I had was uh-huh. that I didn't start it early enough. Why do you feel you didn't start at that time? So 2010, 2016, six year gap. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel you didn't start efficiently or more like confidently pursuing what you really wanted to do? What do you think kind of held you back and what kind of pushed you to actually do it? Knowing wasn't enough. Okay. I think knowing what I wanted to do wasn't enough. Okay. I think a lot of people know what they want to do. Mm-hmm. They have every intention on getting it done. Yeah. But there's not a plan in place. Yeah, it's And true, I think true. that's the thing that I really ran into. Like, I wanted to be in television in 2010. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be in movies and all that stuff in 2010. Of course, of course. I knew it. 
but I didn't get started into 2015, 2016, only mm-hmm. because I didn't have a plan in place. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. So that was the most important thing for me. So realistically, not having a plan is what held me back. And then finally devising the plan is what pushed me forward. Mm. So, you know, that's literally the make or break for you. Like, yeah. you can say... I want to do all of these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sure. if you don't plan on actually doing it or you don't put a plan in place to actually do it, yep. you know, I'm definitely contradicting myself right now to <laughs> some degree, too, because there's plenty of times where I've told myself I have a plan. Yeah. yeah. And it just really wasn't a solid plan. You know, yeah, man, um, true. There's, there's levels to this plan stuff. You know, there's it really is. levels to this plan it stuff. Is. But I think at the end of the day, if you have a solid plan that not only can you pres- um, for you to let other people know like what the plan is and they know for sure mm-hmm. what it is then it's easier for everybody to move. You know, it's not just one of those situations where you know the plan, but everybody on your team doesn't know it. Exactly. And I think now that you mentioned that, in terms of like basketball, I think one of the things that really helped me in terms of planning, I think was the way like Phil Jackson, the way he coached his Bulls teams, his Lakers teams, he was very detail oriented where mm-hmm. it's like trying off and it's so complicated. But once you figure it out, it's like, all right, this can happen if this can happen, if this can happen. And it's crazy because I was like, all right, I like the way he's very detail oriented where he plans for every single thing and every single action leads to another action. And so I took some of that knowledge and I was implementing it into my own planning into strategy and i figured it takes time to actually build a solid concrete plan but once you're like actually executing the plan it's such a breeze like before when i was doing my old like clothing thing i was pretty much walking blindly i was just all right i'll figure it out along the way once i actually had a plan established for this for my social media marketing agency it was a whole game changer because i spent months making those plans devising them making sure everything would go perfectly once I did that, it was a whole game changer because then it's like, all right, once I'm actually doing it, man, it was such a breeze. It's like, all right, I do this, I do that. And I, at that point, I don't have to think anymore. It's all on paper. It's exactly. just doing it, committing to doing it. That's exactly the case. You know, I think some people need to understand that writing things down, even though to some degree is a lost art. And like, you yeah, really man. don't, you really don't really like, like, you, people don't write any, phone. exactly, phone. you know, and I get it to some degree too. Like, it's a lot easier because you get to hold it with you, but it's a different level of completion and success you have when you're able to really see it written down only because you took the effort to write it down. So of you're going to take course. the effort to remember it even more. You know, if you write it in your notes and your phone and things of that nature, yeah. it's, it's there. You can always go back and reference it. But you have to go look for it. You know, it's a different level of completion for some people to write these goals down. Exactly. Where it, you can see it all the man, time. Man, yeah. And that's the one thing I think importance is like when you can actually see what the goals are because it reminds you every day like, hey, yeah. don't slack off. This exactly. is what you need to work on. Like exactly. you mentioned before, off air, priority. Once you figure out what priority is, what's important at that moment, pretty much your whole day revolves around that priority. If yes. For example, if your priority is you have a child, you're not going to go play basketball. 10 hours a day knowing you have a child because why child is your priority you need to make sure they're taken care for Mm -hmm. so once you figure that priority what do i need to devote more time to to reach the goals that i want to reach it goes easily at that point your mind is more subconsciously saying hey i know you want to do this but don't forget we haven't done this yet yeah then it's like uphill trajectory because at that point you just got to be more consistent truthful to yourself truthful to your goals because from there on it's easy it's like you're just walking a nice path instead of walking a bunch of rocks a bunch of uphill journeys yeah i know right now i'm working on one of my projects it's called Mm -hmm. the rule yeah and the team that i have are very very meticulous about what they do yeah they're very very they prioritize a lot of stuff for this show definitely definitely Um, the one thing that i'm realizing though through that is that priorities are always different for everybody exactly but when you have a team that has the same priority and that they all on the same page Mm -hmm. it all eventually works out yeah yeah Um, sure and i think the idea of you having a priority and you worrying about your priority versus other people worried about theirs but then when you have everybody coming together to worry about the same priority definitely it works even better for you it's a better, yeah yeah smooth, for sure growing, you know process and i think through that we'll all learn how to prioritize better because you may be able to pick up some things from other people mm-hmm. like i'm able to pick up some things from people that, that are attached to this project only because i'm watching them all the time yeah i'm around them a lot often you know i'm picking up Oh, that's how they do this. Oh, that's how they do this. Exactly, yeah. Oh, it'll make my job a little easier. I can prioritize this on another level. Yeah, for sure. I can give myself this job knowing that I can also do this, but I can also make this a priority. Definitely, definitely. Those types of things is necessary. I think 
people don't really watch others to learn. I just think they watch others to criticize. Man, on the nail. I think, like you mentioned, tying it back in, when you see somebody, if you're not analyzing them or if you're not thinking, what are they doing much better than I am that I can take and develop myself into a better character? If you're just looking at them and saying, oh, he's not doing this, he's not doing that. Yeah. Then it's like you're missing the whole point. Exactly. The idea is for anytime you meet somebody, what can they add of value to both your life and your experience as a human? Mm -hmm. When we deny ourselves because of our closed mindedness, we're missing out on the potential life changing events that yeah. will potentially unfold. I think on my end, if I was always closed minded and I always sought to judge. And I think when I was younger, I had that type of mentality. I think I was very much prone to being a jerk most of the time. Like on my end, my social circle, at times I, th I felt I was a toxic one because it took me a while to realize like, hey, like you don't have to be an asshole for all of your life. Yeah. It's, like it's okay to like make suggestions or mm -hmm. constructive criticism, but just to be mean, I don't think that benefits you or the environment you're in. Once you you really commit to telling yourself, am I really being truthful to who I really am or am I yeah. just being a jerk? Because I don't know, like for you, like for me, I've had moments where I'm like, yeah, I'm being too much of a jerk. Let me go apologize to him. Yeah. The, the simple act of even apologizing, it's like a mystery now. If yeah. Honestly, you know, it's funny. My problem isn't being a jerk. Mm -hmm. My problem is trying to please everybody. Oh, man. So the problem that I have is that when I try to please everybody. Yeah, yeah. Then somewhere down the line, uh -huh. <laughs> somebody suffers. Ah, yeah. Somebody yeah. feels a certain way about what I did. Yeah. That's because true. I was trying to please everybody. Man. And in that process, you do get people who feel like you are the jerk. <laughs> because it's like you're not the intentional jerk. You're just like the jerk by association. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's what I'm running into a lot. You know, I for sure. I think the thing is is my mentality is there's enough for everybody to eat. Yeah, definitely. You know, 100%. There's, en there's enough for everybody to eat. And if I'm able to get a group of people on the same page, we can all eat. The problem that I have is that when I get that group together, I try to please everybody and give everybody what it is they want uh. without anything of anything for me. Like my thing is like if I can get my team to where it is and I'm good instead of saying I need me and my team mm -hmm. to be good. And I think that's the thing that I need to start working on some more. But at the same time, I don't want to go off course of who I am. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm not that type of person to be a jerk. But like, oh, hell no, you can't do this. <laughs> like, if you give effort and you give yourself the opportunity and you're ambitious just like I am, yep. I'm, I'm always going to have a seat at my table. That does not mean that you are permanently in that seat. Mm -hmm. It just means during that time, the seat is yours. Yep, definitely. But in the event that, let's say, you're eating and something happens where you start reaching on other people's plates, then I got to get rid of you and yeah, put somebody yeah. else in that seat. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I think the moment you can identify each individual for who they are and for their true character in that social circle really changes everything. Because at that time, in that period, they might be the best friend you ever have mm -hmm. but slowly through time. Everybody has different goals eventually. Everybody either segues more into your life or segues away from your life. And that's okay. I think the idea is that at that time and period when you have somebody that's so influential to you, to keep them as long as you can. Because yes. at the end of the day, they'll really help you become a better individual, a better human. Yeah. And most importantly, like self-aware. Mm -hmm. And if you don't really give that consideration at that time and you're just thinking, oh, like I shouldn't even bother having this type of relationship with him or friendship with him because they're going to leave either way. Like if yeah. you have a friend that's from New York, you know they're going to leave to New York. <laughs> but are you going to take your time to develop that friendship, that relationship where you can say, man, like I'm sad he's leaving, but I learned so much from him. Yeah. Because eventually everybody leaves. Yeah, I would say like this. Not everybody is meant to be with you the entire journey. Mm -hmm. You make the best of the situation with those people during that time. Yep. But I will say if you're ever blessed to have people that you can keep longer than expected, those are the people you keep. You know, for me, I have plenty of people that I know. As far as the people that I'm keeping, that percentage is very, very small. That number is very small. Like, I'm working on my production company right now. Yeah, yeah. And I have plenty of people that I work with. Definitely. You know? uh -huh. you know, I can I can probably name them all in, like, two hands. Yep. But the thing for me is, like, out of all those people, how many of them are going to stick around? Exactly, I think for me, exactly. I'm not worried about sticking around. I'm more worried about keeping my focus yeah. on what's necessary. Definitely. And I think that's the thing that is important for me because... I want to make sure that regardless of whatever it is that I intend to do, mm -hmm. I have the most possible and most strongest team around me. Exactly. So, you know, so like with me working on my project, The Rule, you know, I have two people that help me put it together. You yeah. Know, Jessica and Kayla. Yeah. Those are the two women that I've had with me right now. Mm -hmm. They're incredible at their job. Definitely. They're incredible at what they do. Yep. 
and I'm steadily learning from them, you know, and in that aspect, you try to keep people like that around. Yeah. Versus I've worked with other people as well. Like I remember working on a basketball league. Yeah. I was filming all the games. I was doing all of that stuff. And I loved everything about it, Mm -hmm. but I didn't love how everything was going Mm -hmm. after a certain while. Got you. And when I finally learned, like, I deserved more, I should be valued more. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't getting it. Definitely. I took myself out of the situation. Exactly. Knowing what your value is, is important. Because you can't just say, if you don't know what your value is, you need to figure that out. Exactly. Exactly. You can't compare yourself to a piece of toast knowing you're a mine of gold. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why I feel like it's necessary for a lot of people to see, are those the type of people that you have around that you can keep? Are those the type of people that are supposed to be here momentarily? Mm -hmm. Are those the people that you're not even supposed to be around? I think that aspect is something that people need to understand. But at the same time, like I said, if you are ever blessed to get people that you know you want to be around for a very, very long time. Definitely. Keep them. Because, I mean, they bring value not just to what you're doing, but just to your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the important thing is you have value to your life. Exactly. Eventually, once you round yourself up, I think. Every experience, every person you meet, every failure, every success, it shapes you to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And eventually that person that you are at that moment is either going to contribute to the world or take away from the world. Yeah. And it just depends which side of the coin you're on. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, ideally, I think the whole idea behind Social Circle, and I think you really brought it up. I think the main points are just being more self-aware, being more understanding to one another, identifying who you want in your social circle, being open-minded enough to even bring them in that circle and what can you learn from them to better yourself as a human. Yeah, I think it all ties back together that at the end of the day, you are who you are based on the people you surround yourself with yes. and who you model your life after or your actions after. The mentorship, the social circle aspect of it, I think it's a very critical point that most of our youth needs to really figure out and really divulge into finding more of about themselves because without it we're just blind sheep we're just walking around without a game plan to really push ourselves to the next journey in life or the next successful goal that we're really trying to establish but yeah look as a whole i really want to thank you for coming in today i appreciate the invite Uh, it was a great experience i think for the first ever podcast i've ever done i think it's very eye-opening the dynamic you're pretty much natural at this <laughs> but yeah i mean give us a few updates on what you're working on right now where can we reach you at just okay. uh, all that good stuff everything except your social don't hey. give us that <laughs> well right like i said right now i have a movie that's on youtube right now called fight the force it's literally about the last 25 years of women's history with the positive look at it you know i have that movie that's out i'm mm-hmm. working on two television shows right now one's called the rule it's a sitcom i'm trying to lean on what it was like in the 90s with those sitcoms uh, nice. I'm trying to bring that to the modern day. And then I also have a show called The Queen's Club. And The Queen's Club is like my version of what LeBron has with the shop. Ah, You know, so I'm trying to do like my thing with that. Um, You know, I've also been a part of a movie called South Central Love. Yeah, yeah. Written, directed, and starred in by my friend Christina Cooper. Nice, Um, nice. You know, I was there on set photography, but I mean, just the environment around that was incredible. For sure. They have one more screening that they're going to be doing, but they've been screening it since the beginning of August. Gotcha. You know, just that. And I think on top of that, just trying to build my production company and build my team you know i think the the biggest thing is i'm slowly understanding what it's going to take to get all of it done yep and i'm also starting to enjoy more of those victories because that's what i didn't do mm-hmm. like as i do these things like i can celebrate that i have two television shows that <laughs> yeah, i'm working yeah. on right now i can celebrate that i have exactly. a movie that i have i can celebrate that i've literally done two movies in a year yeah yeah i can celebrate that i've had some of my pictures have been published in magazines nice and stuff nice like that. i can celebrate that before i wasn't able to celebrate it because i was so focused on like the next thing and next thing and i was like all right this is what i'm doing yep. so i think the bottom line is that i mean i'm all over the place but outside of everything i'm doing with film and television like i work at lake street community center nice and nice. i do all the sports there so you literally Respect. if you ever wanted to come and your child wants some training yeah. or whatever the case is like we do everything there basketball volleyball yeah. dodgeball yeah all year round I'm always doing something. Hit so up just, Blake Street. Yeah, so hit up Blake Street. But other than that, it's just one of those situations where I'm learning everything. But yeah, that's what I'm pretty much doing. All right. And that concludes our first ever podcast. Let's give a round of applause to Mr. Jason Taylor. Yes. Thank you very much yeah. for dropping by. We hope you can visit us at understandme.blog. I'll tag his Twitter handle, Instagram handle, Facebook handle, any type of handle he has, even if it's a bike. All right? Yeah. I love Let's it. enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for stopping by and listening to the Understand Me Blog podcast. Take care.
You've been listening to the Understand Me podcast. Tune in next time as we continue to change the world one voice at a time, one person at a time. Visit our website at understandme.blog. Visit our blog and follow us on our social media. See you next time.